Hello and welcome to Lake to Lake, a new show about Bellevue. I'm Officer Carla Iafrate with the Bellevue Police Department. This month we'll share some stories about major East Bellevue arterials that are getting repaved and a new suspension bridge at the Bellevue Botanical Garden. The structure allows visitors to take a walk on the wild side. Before we get to our other features, here are some headlines from last month. More than 5,000 people officially became Bellevue residents on June 1st with the annexation of three unincorporated areas of South Bellevue. In what is the city's last major annexation, residents of Eastgate, Tamara Hills, and Horizon View neighborhoods became a part of the city. Altogether, they represent more than 2,000 homes on 856 acres. Each unincorporated area was surrounded by the city of Bellevue. By joining the city, residents will enjoy lower property taxes and better services. The City Council agreed to annex the three areas after more than 50% of the property owners in each neighborhood petitioned to incorporate. Residents of the newly incorporated areas will celebrate joining Bellevue at the welcome party on July 26. Bellevue recently partnered with Sarve Wild Care Center to host a wildlife baby shower benefiting injured or abandoned wild animals. At Lewis Creek Park, wildlife experts and park rangers provided education and showcased some of the many animals that have benefited from the rehabilitation services. Animals included an owl, a possum, and a spectacular golden eagle. Generous residents donated more than $2,000 in wildlife supplies such as pet food, dishes, and toys. Residents celebrated Bellevue's diversity at a forum in early May. According to the 2010 census, minorities now comprise 41% of Bellevue's population. At a city hall forum, experts explained how residents from different backgrounds can build community unity and help prevent crimes related to bias. One thing I wanted to emphasize tonight is that everybody in this room, I'm really encouraging people to connect uh, with each other and stay in touch because this um, thing called cultural diversity is kind of an ongoing journey that we're all on. The forum explored state and national statistics related to such crimes and options for preventing and reporting them. Participants discussed on how communities can increase cultural interaction, understanding, and appreciation of a diverse population. With the I-405 braids project done, the notorious weave is now in the rear view mirror. In the old days, motorists on northbound I-405 in downtown Bellevue had to weave across traffic entering the freeway when they were trying to exit to State Route 520. Working with Bellevue, the State Department of Transportation came up with a solution, the braids. It's a system of overpasses and exit ramps designed to reduce congestion and increase safety. On May 22nd, elected officials celebrated completion of the last phase of work. Project funding included $80 million from the Federal American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Bellevue's inaugural Heart Week event was a success with more than 1,200 people taking part. From May 5th to May 12th, Bellevue firefighters teamed up with Overlake Hospital doctors to provide free blood pressure and glucose screenings at various locations. Did you like your blood pressure checked? Yeah. How about your blood sugar? The intention of Heart Week was to get out and meet the public, to engage with the citizen, in a way that you know they can meet a firefighter on a non-emergency setting, but also to prevent some cardiovascular illness through blood pressure and blood sugar awareness, pre-diabetes awareness. Thank you so much. Residents got rid of tons of electronics at the Bellevue Spring Recycling Day. At the event, 955 cars came to the First Presbyterian Church parking lot with more than 55 tons of materials, including appliances, computers, TVs, mattresses, and tires. A new item collected this year was styrofoam, and many took advantage. Bellevue is unique in a, a couple different ways. One is that the city staff is very eager to always add additional materials, um, which is fantastic because city of Bellevue residents are eager to recycle. And then secondly, the uh, city volunteer efforts have been fantastic over the years. The city has about 10 to 15 volunteers that regularly come out and work on these events, rain or shine twice a year for the last 20 plus years. At Bellevue's Fall Recycling Day in October, workers will accept documents for shredding. Details will be mailed to residents in the fall. Or you can call utilities at 425-452-6932 for more information. Staff from park departments around the state gathered in Bellevue for their annual conference. 
Bellevue's Parks and Community Services Department hosted the event and trade show. With Bellevue as the backdrop, the Washington Recreation and Park Association held more than 50 educational sessions over four days. As part of the conference, Rachel Coleman performed at the Highland Community Center. Coleman, co-creator of the hit public television show, Signing Time, sings and signs for kids of all ages. Bellevue police and volunteers help children become safer during a recent event at Factoria Mall. At Child Safety Day, identification kits were processed for 75 children and 135 received free or discounted bicycle helmets. In all, about a thousand people attended this event. Last but not least, 300 kids were photographed on a police motorcycle. Also acknowledged at the event was National Law Enforcement Memorial Day, an opportunity to recognize peace officers who have given their lives in public service. It may be hard to see, but the new pavement going down on Bellevue streets this year has a green hue. That's right, for the first time, recycled material is part of the asphalt being rolled out, with discarded roof shingles and old pavement making up 18% of the new road surface. Teresa Berg tells us how the city's annual overlay program works. It's spring in Bellevue, and that means it's time for the city to begin its annual street overlay program. The program, now in its 26th year, ensures that Bellevue roads are maintained in excellent condition in the most cost-effective way. This is done by carefully evaluating road conditions citywide on an ongoing basis. After a street segment is chosen to be part of the overlay program, workers grind off the top two inches of asphalt, then they repave it with a new layer, smoothing the surface with heavy rolling machines. The work may also include replacing curb, gutter, and sidewalk and curb ramps. Installing and upgrading curb ramps is a mandatory element of street resurfacing. The overlay program is a smart investment because it would cost up to three times more to replace a street than to repave it. Here are some before and after examples of the difference an overlay makes. This year, most of the overlay projects will be clustered in Northeast Bellevue. Work will start in June on 148th Avenue Northeast, between Main Street and Bell Red Road. After that, crews will move to Northeast 8th Street between 124th Avenue Northeast and 156th Avenue Northeast. In August, plans call for work on 148th Avenue Northeast between Bell Red Road and State Route 520. The goal is to wrap up paving work on 164th Avenue from Northeast 8th Street to Southeast 14th Street before school starts in September. This repaving work will cause traffic delays, so please note where construction is taking place and try to avoid it if possible. The city will use variable message boards, street signs, news releases, postcards, and its webpage to keep drivers informed of upcoming work. For the latest road construction information, visit the city's webpage at www.bellevuewa.gov slash traffic underscore advisories. Thank you for your patience and remember, the overlay program helps keep roads in Bellevue smooth. On Mother's Day, hundreds of residents celebrated the Bellevue Botanical Garden's newest feature, the Ravine Experience. Here's Robin Hasseth to explain. There's a new experience open at the Bellevue Botanical Garden. And it is called the Ravine Experience, Take a Walk on the Wild Side. And it's the opportunity for the public to experience a, about a five acre parcel in a totally natural condition without anything having been planted in it other than native species. They will access it across a 150 foot long, five foot wide suspension bridge that will take them above this ravine, going on top of and through a forested canopy. And then they'll have a trail to walk on, around, and ultimately back out of the ravine. And it will give them an opportunity to see what a, an intact, uh, about a hundred year old uh, native forest looks like, smells like. The bridge is located in a five acre section of the southwest corner of the Bellevue Botanical Garden, 
and the recent grand opening celebration attracted hundreds of people who all wanted to take part in the ravine garden experience. This project is so exciting for the city and for the garden because it's a tremendous example of what we can accomplish when a lot of people come together to work on a vision. And now, take a look at some of our upcoming events. On Tuesday, June 12, bring Dad to the Father's Day Dance from 2 to 4 p.m. at the North Bellevue Community Center. The Sounds of Swing will perform. Cost is $3 at the door. To register and for more information, call 425-452. 7681. On Sunday, June 17, 8.30 a.m. to 12 noon, enjoy a great day of activities with Dad at the Father's Day Pancake Breakfast and Fun Day at South Bellevue Community Center. Climb the climbing wall, try the vertical playpen, and enjoy a family trek through Eastgate Park. Dads and moms and kids and adults of all ages are welcome. Cost is $8. For more information, call 425-452-4240. On June 16th, come to the Fraser Cabin Heritage Program at Kelsey Creek Community Farm Park. From 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., participate in hands-on activities that relate to 1880s settler life, agricultural, dairy, household tasks, log cabins, games, and east side history. The event is free and open to all ages. For more information, call 425-450-1049 or visit www.eastsideheritagecenter.org. On June 23rd, 2 to 5 p.m., celebrate the Bellevue Botanical Garden 20th anniversary. Experience garden tours, music in Shorts Visitor Center, and refreshments. For more information, email bbgsoffice at bellevuebotanical.org or call 425-451-3755. On June 23rd and 24th, it's the Bellevue Strawberry Festival at the Crossroads Community Park. Join the Eastside Heritage Center and celebrate the region's agricultural history with shortcake eating contests, strawberry flats, chocolate-covered strawberries, an auto show, vendors, and family fun. For more information, call 425-452-1049 or visit www.bellevuestrawberryfestival.org. That's all for today. For more information about the projects featured on this show, please visit us online at bellevuewa.gov. I'm Officer Carla Iafrate. Thanks for watching this edition of Lake to Lake.